how to secure your photographs, and is uncropped AI ethical? We're gonna get into that today, but I'm also going to give you three tools that are free, three pieces of software that you can use to encrypt your photograph, watermark your photograph, basically put some type of protection on it so that you know that that photograph is yours and it has not been manipulated. So let's get to it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Fireside, one of my favorites, that smokiness. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is kind of a photo video tech day, I suppose. It's kind of techy, but it has to do with photos and how to protect your photographs, number one. But also I wanna discuss something that a manufacturer can do to help us protect our images and protect authentic images so that when we see an image in the news or media or whatnot, we know that that image is real and authentic. I did a video, I think it was last week, and I talked about images that are created by AI. How are we gonna to know what is actually real and what is not. Now the images that we see through AI are just absolutely amazing and some of them are doing a fantastic job and even images of people that don't have six fingers are starting to pop up, which is nice. So what made me dig a little bit deeper into the subject is I was reading an article over on Petapixel and it's called Stable Diffusion Releases a New AI Outpainting Tool called uncrop. Now, if you don't know what outpainting is or uncrop, basically it's a means of taking, let's say a photograph that's this big and now make it this big. And all of that data in between, that missing data through algorithmic equations and through AI, let's call it, it creates that extra data and creates a larger picture. Now, does it do it well? It does it pretty well. Does it do it perfectly? No, but it makes me once again think what is real and what is not these days. So I wanna get into this article with you, but then dig in a little bit deeper and explain to you cryptography and steganography and all the rest of it that you can employ to secure your images or embed secret information into those images so that only you can retrieve it, which I think is fantastic. And once again, it allows you to put an invisible watermark or encrypt or put into an image or music file or an MP4 file data that only only you can access. Once again, knowing that that is yours and it hasn't been manipulated or modified, I think is very important. Anyways, let's get into this article and then I'll dig in, like I said, a little bit deeper. It says, Stability AI, the company behind artificial intelligent image generator, Stable Diffusion, has released a new tool called Uncrop, which allows users to outpaint images. Uncrop will change the aspect ratio of any image by very simply dragging the crop perimeters any way you like. It is powered by Stability AI's text-to-image model, Stable Diffusion XL, and works similarly to Dolly outpainting and Photoshop's generative fill, using advanced AI algorithms to analyze the source image and generate a, quote, visually plausible representation into the latent space. So once again, it's taking that uncropped image and that vacant space and filling it with data in accordance to the data that it sees in the image that's already there. So it builds out, it extrapolates, but as they say, it does it by generating visually plausible representation of that data, visually plausible. So it is guessing, but some of these guesses are pretty damn good. It continues by saying, uncropped allows users to adjust dimensions by reconstructing images and expanding their visual canvas. This is what the company writes. With just a few simple steps, the users can upload a cropped or imperfect image and then witness the magic of outpainting technology in action. Kind of cool. It is definitely kind of cool. Scary, but cool. 
The company says that it can help out a photographer in numerous ways. If you're unhappy with the composition of a photo, it can adjust the framing to make it look better. Or it can be used to fit a photo into a required aspect ratio for use through social media platforms. Now that would make sense, but the only reason you would do that is instead of shooting in a wide format or in landscape mode, you shot it in vertical mode and now you have all this excess space that you have to fill up. Just simply shoot it in landscape mode and then crop down the center and you wouldn't need this tool. But still, this is quite interesting and it is fascinating that it can do this and interpolate the data that it sees and then fill in that vacant area. Very cool. Now there is some limitations. It says the company warns that the results will not always be accurate, especially with images that have quote, extensive missing content, which makes sense. It's having to guess and if it doesn't have a lot of content to guess with, what is it gonna come up with? Something crazy, most likely. And that's what happens a lot of times. It continues by saying, additionally, it is worth noting that Uncrop relies on algorithms to analyze surrounding pixels and fill in the gaps, aiming to provide an aesthetically pleasing and coherent result. This is what Stable AI adds. The tool's accuracy may vary depending on the complexity of the scene. The company also urges users to use Uncrop ethically and responsibly, stating that it is crucial to disclose any modifications made to an image so that there is transparency in the digital realm. That is a great point, and I'm glad that they add that in there. So as we know, there has been a massive rising to this AI generative type of outpainting that goes on, or manipulation of photo and video. And it's a little bit scary. Once again, how do you know what's real and what's not? Now you can use this software, Uncrop, and it is free to use. As a matter of fact, down below, I'll put a link so you can go and check it out. But there is also paid, so you can pay up to like $7 a month or whatever. There is paid plans also, but you can definitely check it out just to see if it's something that interests you, let's say. So now what I did was I was looking up ways of encrypting your photo or ways of watermarking your photo, but invisibly, because a lot of you guys have asked me about this and I've done videos in the past on how to set up your camera right out the get go that it would immediately put in metadata as soon as you take the photo that helps you prove authenticity or that you own the photo and a lot of other stuff. I've done videos on this in the past, but I was looking up specifically steganography as well as cryptography means of, let's say, putting in an invisible mark. Now, if you don't know what steganography is, basically it's this. It says it focuses on hiding the existence of information rather than encrypting it. So steganography is basically taking something and pushing it into an image, but invisibly. It's there but you can't see it with your eyes, all right? That's the whole idea of it. Then you have cryptography, and that's a little bit different. It says cryptography, on the other hand, involves converting the original data into a form of unintelligible or unreadable data, known as ciphertext or cryptographics, algorithms, and keys. So what this means is that you're taking an image now and then breaking it all apart into something that doesn't look like an image, and then when you push it into a piece of software, out comes an image, all right? That's the whole idea of it. Now, that's a little bit of excessive. We don't need that. We're trying to use the steganography so that we can now employ or implement a means of invisibly watermarking our photographs. Instead of stamping our watermark on every single photograph, this is a means of doing it invisibly. So if someone takes it, you can go and then in the court of law and say, hey, this is my photograph and here is my proof thereof. So while I was searching around, I said, you know what, let me see if I can find some free pieces of software that allow you to embed secret data or encrypted data or just simply watermarking into your images. And I found three that were really quite good and I tried out all three just to see how they worked and they did a great job. Now the first one is called Open Puff. The second one is called Open Stego, and the last one is called Silent Eye. Now, if you read through any of them, they're basically all the same. Silent Eye, for example, says that 
that is a free and open source software that combines steganography and cryptography techniques to embed hidden messages into images. It supports various image formats and provides encryption options to protect the embedded data. So you might not need to protect the hidden data. You might just need to embed that data. So instead of using the steganography and cryptography, you're just going to use the steganography. It will basically take a watermark and stick it onto your image and it will be invisible to the human eye, which is perfect to what we are doing. So it's something to take a look at and test out. I thought these were really great. I thought it was cool to be able to do this. I didn't know that it was even possible, but I think there needs to be a one up going on here. And the reason I say that is I think that this is great, but the problem that all of these type of tools have is that once an image is manipulated, all right, saved back out, lowered quality, changed colored, manipulated in any way, what happens is, is now those specific pixels that the software is trying to find, that the encryption is now forced into, it can't see it anymore. It can't find it anymore. Now, that's a good thing and a bad thing. Now, if you're actually trying to put data into it, it's a bad thing because you're not going to find the data anymore. But it's a good thing because at that point, people are going to be able to say, hey, that's not my image anymore. It was manipulated. And how do you know it's manipulated, sir? Well, the reason I know is if I go in there and I put in my cipher key, then I don't come up with my response, let's say, because it's no longer there. Once the image is manipulated, that information, that encryption is gone. So knowing that this is the fact, I do believe that, and like I said in a previous video, I do believe that companies, the manufacturers, the camera manufacturers need to create a means of watermarking at the time of capture. Now, like I said at the very beginning of this video, we can set our camera to the minute, the second that we click the shutter, it will automatically put copyright information into the metadata of our photographs. That is great and all. All right. But the problem is, is there is a lot of social media platforms out there, Facebook, there's a lot of them that strip the metadata off our photographs when we upload them into the cloud to these services. At that point, all of your copyright information is nixed. It is gone. And that is a major problem. But if the manufacturer was able to embed a stenographic type of image upon your image that is 100% invisible, that is specific to you, now this is a different story, right? Because now the social media platforms cannot strip that information out. They might be able to reduce the quality, but the manufacturers can make it big enough, let's say, that it can still see it and know that that is your image and not someone else. Once again, proving authenticity, but also proving who owns it, ownership, copyright. And that is a major, major problem today. Copyright is going away of the dinosaur, but also the idea of knowing what is real and what is not is a major problem also. We don't know these days. We cannot tell. 95% of the population will not be able to recognize the difference between an original image and a modified image. They just simply won't. They won't know what to look for, number one. Number two, the tools for modification are becoming so good that it's even harder even for the 5% to be able to recognize what is real and what is not. So I do think that there needs to be some type of baseline or really down into the raw images level to use this type of steganography on your images once again at the time of capture so that at least we can say this is mine. I think that this is very powerful. This would also be very powerful for media in general. If you are a news corporation and you have a field of photographers out there, Many times in the past, we've seen news organizations stating that they were duped by the photographer in saying that this is an authentic image where it was actually a photo manipulation. Whereas if that news organization was only allowed or only able to accept photographs that have this type of invisible watermarking on the images, they can reference the information and then discern what is real and what is not, what is authentic and what is manipulative. What is the real image that the photographer took in comparison to the image that was provided to them? Was it modified or not? 
So once again, for TV, for media of any kind, magazines, whatever, it is very imperative for the reader or the viewer to believe in your content. And if you put out content out there that is unbelievable, well, that trust is gone. And at that point, they now believe nothing that you have to say or what you have to show. And that we have seen with many magazines in the past that have displayed images from photographers that were truly modified and they gave a different perception of what was going on. Times of war, for example. Modifying the number of people at a rally, for example. There has been a ton of photos and videos that we have consumed that are 100% fake. But anyways, guys, I want to know what you think about this. Do you think that the camera manufacturers should produce some means of putting on that invisible watermarking? Number one. Number two, what do you think about uncrop? Is it ethical? Is it not? I'm very happy that they say, hey, listen, use this, but also let people know that you have modified the image because it is very important in today's age of digital media. And also, what do you think about Open Puff and Open Stego as well as Silent Eye? Is this something that you want to look into? And if you do down below, let us know that you have. Also, if you like this content, even the least, throw it a thumbs up. That would be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Click this button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And if you're looking for a VPN, check out Speedify. I've been using them for about a month now and they gave us a promo code which gives you 20% off if you wanna check it out. If you're looking for faster speeds, better reliability, VPN for security, 250-bit encryption, so on and so forth, check out Speedify. Once again, 20% off using promo code jcristina or use the link down below jcristina.com forward slash speed and you will get 20% off automatically. Finally, head over to my website jcristina.com where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years and hopefully there's something there that you might like and if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it guys, I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy and we'll see you in the next one. Love y'all.